and he does this all this recording in his studio. When you watch him play that keyboard, it's almost fun. I mean, I've seen it with Frankie, but when he does it on his show, he has the freedom to go all, all different ways. Robbie Roberts, if you're watching, there's only one of you. Never to be another. You're incredible. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, really great to be back with you. A lot better than being in the hospital, flat on my back. I really appreciate uh, all of the prayers and your well wishes from last week uh, after I had those, those few days in the hospital. <clears throat> I was diagnosed with what's called fascist arthritis, uh, which simply means um, I've got some arthritis in my back, uh, bulging discs, some uh, the the uh, pads between are are decaying. Uh, in other words, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, there's uh, not a lot they can do about it, uh, given my age and uh, some of the other conditions that I have. Uh, but as I said, I do appreciate your prayers, uh, your well wishes. Uh, they're going to try and help me with some pain management and. Um, We'll, we'll find out what that's all about. Anyway, I'm doing much better. Thank you. Uh, yesterday was the sixth Sunday in Lent, and one of the lessons uh, was from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. I'm simply going to read uh, verses uh, 7 through 9. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who believe, to all who obey him. I'm sorry, to all who obey him. When I read that, I think about uh, the prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, the Gospels describe uh, some of the content of that prayer. They don't really describe uh, the, the tenor or the flavor of that prayer. Uh, we do know uh, that he prayed that he might not have to go through this whole thing and uh, that he would not have to, uh, to endure the, the sufferings. And, and we're talking about more than physical suffering here. Uh, that's what you and I fixate on is, is the physical pain and suffering. But it's, there's more to it than that. It's, it's the, the whole pain of the separation that he would experience because of the separation of death as the result of our sins. Uh, if you will forgive the way I'm going to say it, if it offends you, but Jesus literally went through hell for you and me. That's what it's all about there on the cross. He, he suffered everything that you and I should have suffered. What he said was, Father, for, uh, all things are possible for you. So if possible, uh, let this cup pass from me. Uh, you and I have prayed that prayer, right? Maybe, maybe not said in those exact words, but we've prayed the prayer. We've said, uh, Father, um, I, I don't like what's facing what I'm facing. Or, Father, this seems impossible. Or, Lord, uh, why do I have to go through this right now? 
Or, or what's this all about? And we've got a number of ways of praying that very same prayer. We've had to face difficulties and struggles and uncertainties and pain and, and other things. And we've asked God uh, to remove it so that, so that we don't have to go through it. It's the second part of the prayer that we have difficulty with. At least I know I do. Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. It's not easy to pray that part of the prayer. It's not easy to, to pray because we don't know what the future holds for us. We don't know what the struggle might be. Uh, all we face is the uncertainty, the difficulties, the struggles, the hopelessness. And I don't know about you, but I've done a pretty good job of convincing myself that I know what's best for me. Unfortunately, it's not always true, and it doesn't always work out that way. There are a lot of times in life when what I think is best for me isn't. And what has happened is that it, what has happened is that uh, I discovered that I really got myself in some bad situations. We're told that Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered. It doesn't make sense to us, does it? Well, as, as uh, you might think, um, it's whether you're a good son or daughter is determined by uh, whether you're obedient when times become, when it becomes difficult, when you don't understand what's going on, when you don't understand what you're facing in the future. Jesus' whole life was nothing but obedience to the will of God, but it was there in the Garden of Gethsemane and then on the cross that that obedience was crystallized, if I can use that word. And it was made evident and apparent. And by that obedience, he became the source of salvation for you and for me. I believe that Jesus knew that there was no other way. That he had to go through the cross if he was going to provide salvation or we, if we were going to, to have salvation. I think the, this whole passage about the struggle in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, is a way to show us the depth of his humanity. I mean, he really did not want to go through it. He knew better than you and I do the consequences of our sin. And I, I understand he didn't want to face the cross. I certainly didn't. He didn't want to face the consequences of, of uh, what was going on. But he did face them. And because of that, the author of the book of salvation, uh, the book of Hebrews says, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. And what is that obedience? Not just doing what's right and what's wrong, but that obedience is by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that through him, you and I have eternal life. That's what this week is all about. His death for our salvation, his resurrection for our forgiveness. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, there are so many times in life that are filled with uncertainty or pain, and we, like your son, ask that, that we might not have to endure them. Help us, Father, to believe and trust that no matter the difficulties or struggles we might face in life, no matter the things we might have to endure, according to your word of, of promise, we are always safe in your hands and your grace is sufficient and made perfect even in our weaknesses. Thank you for suffering, uh, for the suffering and death of your son on our behalf. Thank you for the promise of new life and salvation won for us through his resurrection. Thank you for walking with us daily and Father on those days where it seems impossible to walk. Those days you carry us. Be with those who are going through difficult times tonight, who are facing uncertainty and for whom the future seems bleak. Grant them the ability to find strength and comfort in your word of promise that you're always with us and will never leave us or forsake us. Bless the program tonight, Father, and may everything we do glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Robbie, uh, back to you, and uh, God bless everyone. There is
his joy in his mercy there is joy in his love there is joy in his forgiveness thank you Jesus thank you Lord there is peace There is joy, of course, as you know, and I hope you can hear me now. uh, There's this amazing kind of situation when you're doing these video podcast kind of things. And if you don't have a microphone, it's hard to kind of connect out into the world. And here I am talking away. I'm all set to do the the whole uh, show and everything. And here I'm talking to you guys in the comments and all of a sudden, no sound, no sound, no sound. Uh, duh, I kind of, well, I didn't kind of, I forgot to connect the microphone, but my mob Heil microphone is alive and well now and cooking uh, and connected. So uh, it is 724, and in six minutes we have the latest release that we are going to uh, uh, drop tonight, as the kids all say. But before we do that, we are going to bring in the special guest, 
our dear friend, uh, friend to the show, friend to me, and the super amazing, talented Sarah Nimitz. Let's see where you are. Sarah, are you there? Hey. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Look. Everyone's here. They love you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hear the applause. You've been traveling all over the world, haven't you? Yes, it's been uh, it's been busy. I was in New York and then uh, flew right back, did uh, two shows the same day, then another two shows the next day. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was so much fun. It was a really great time playing with the band Ozone Squeeze. That is super cool. I saw a picture of you in New York City. Where did I put that picture here? Ooh. Well, that's not you, is it? <laughs> no, that. Oops, wrong I button. How about me. this one? Well, that's you and Aww. I in the studio. Last in the studio. I think. Well, a couple weeks ago now, I guess. Gosh, yeah. There I you guess are. It's moving fast. There I am. Yeah, that's the Iridium, right there off of Times Square, right near Broadway. Um, that is so cool. That really whole function. area right there, Times Square. There's so much happening, and uh, you and the Iridium. The guys, the place you guys played with Osnoy, yeah. Ozone Squeeze, is one of the premier jazz clubs in the world. It is, it is, and it used to be um, owned by Les Paul. Yes. he people. used to play there every play. Monday. I remember going to see I him. I know. Oh, you got to see him. Yeah, and you and when you oh. went and you go there, you know how intimate that club is. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you can. I mean, you're sitting like three oh. feet from every from the. Uh, performers i so wish i had gotten to see him i uh that that would have been amazing Something you else. probably have a les paul guitar don't you uh you know what i don't and i need to get one but I everyone so. i know has one i'm like the only person well you know what it is 7 26 the clock tells me on the wall Ooh, and let's move yes. over to by the way we led in with the song that we released last week um which is There Is Joy, and yes, uh, that's yes, been doing nice great, by the way. Check there. this out. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, that's not it, is it? Uh, how about I like this it, one though. right here? Though? A lot of notes there. That's a lot of... Wow. Okay, that's not it. That So we passed that's 5 million good, YouTube views uh, recently, but here it is, I think. <sighs> that's incredible. Well, that looks like the same thing to me, doesn't it? Well, how about wow, over here? That's worth showing twice, though. That's a pretty huge accomplishment. I Well, thanks to you. Here we go. This is uh, the YouTube views for There Is Joy. Okay, check it out. Released uh, just under 24 hours ago, and we've got, I mean, uh, one week ago, 10,865 views. That is great. And picked up some subscribers. Yeah. That's fantastic. Very, very cool. Very I cool. Love it. So here's the yeah. big. Hey, two weeks in a row. Ro yeah, two, two weeks in a row. <laughs> as uh, <laughs> wow. Albert Fudd would say, two <laughs> weeks in a row. We've got a new song premiere, and we've got Sarah Nimitz on the broadcast. This is super cool. I am honored to get to be here two nights in a row. Let's uh, let's sing too. Let's see what we got this. Yeah, sing too, as uh, as Ernie Banks might <laughs> as our say. Friend huh? Ernie would say yes. Now, where in the world is uh, Ooh, that song? That, what if I don't have that? Countdown? That would be bad. That would be I just guess like we me could just too, start counting you. back once it moves. There, it, oh, there we go. A minute twenty nine. A minute twenty five. So it's We're coming down close. soon. Um, I've got a couple kind of cool little things here. Check it out. This is. Well, there's the, oh, let me get you back into the picture here. Why is, oh, there you are. You're on the other side, aren't you? Yeah. Hello. Over here. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> over here. <laughs> is Robbie. that your good side or does it? Uh... I, I, either you could say I, they're both good sides or I don't have a good side. They're both uh, the I think same. all the sides are good. <laughs> Um, so there's the lyrics, Lord, give me faith, Lord, give me strength to grant me the grace to love you. And by the way, uh, our new buddy, Michael McDonald, this was yeah. inspired by Michael McDonald, wasn't it? It was, it had a very Michael McDonald feel that, that was one of the first things that kind of got established. Yeah. I don't know how it started. I probably from you, but it just came up out of nowhere. 
I don't, yeah, I don't remember exactly. I do, I saw, well, we can talk about that in a minute, but let's get ready okay. for the world premiere. It's coming out on Spotify, People all get ready. streaming services. Anything you want to say in the last 15 seconds? Oh, uh, everybody, please listen to it if you can. It helps the algorithms and helps more people hear Robbie's records. And it goes like five, six, five, four, four, three. three. Hey.
All right, there it is. There it is. It's officially out in the world. Phil, I love Phil Parkman's From His Lips to Gar to God's Ears, and it sounds like a hit to me. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all I can say is we definitely, thanks. We definitely had a lot of fun making it. It was probably yeah. another one of those 4 a.m. sort of nights in <laughs> early COVID. Yeah, that was that, that was one of the COVID, one of the later COVID, I think, uh, song. Okay. Oh, I love this. Senior B, could you call this Christian Yacht Rock? I guess you could. I mean, hey, that could be a really whole a new thing. genre. They have doesn't CCM now, kind of have contemporary be, Christian music. Yeah. Doesn't Yacht Rock kind of have to have been recorded in the 80s, though? I guess there <laughs> is there modern Yacht Rock. I don't know. I guess it it opens up a whole bunch of questions that I don't know the answer to. Which I don't maybe know is either. Good. But you know what? If it was never Call done before, whatever you that, want. there's always a first time, right? That's true. As long as folks listen to it, you can call it anything. Amen, sister. Uh, let's go back to that lyric uh, sheet here that we have over here, and that would be right here. What do you uh, you want to talk about the lyrics a little bit? Why don't you read it, or or yeah. any any uh, any wisdom well, you want to shed on these lyrics? My first takeaway from just rereading the lyrics after years uh, that I thought was really interesting is the fact that faith is a gift. You know, I think mm. so often, so often when you think of gifts, you know, everyone has some gift and Amen. I usually think of that as their abilities, you know, like they're very good at organizing talents or and all that kind of stuff. talents yeah. or lifting people up or administering, yeah. you know, whatever those kind of gifts. I don't often think of, of faith as a gift, but I can't quote an actual verse, but I, I know that it is. And, um, you know, we usually make faith something that you can take credit for. Like, well, you know, I just need to be better and work harder, which is true. You know, and those are definitely things we're all trying to do. But I think the fact that faith ultimately is a, a gift that gets to be cultivated like anything else, you know, you put in your your reps and, and spending time. And, and that's kind of my takeaway. And God, you know, I remember actually I, when I was putting this together, check this out. This was a rhythm chart. Oh, look cool. at the title. Grant me grace. Oh, that's cool. So I remember originally when we were writing it, we were floating the idea of the title being grant me grace because it's grace. catchier in terms of a, as a right. phrase. And it's another unmerited gift. Mm -hmm. God's riches at Christ's That's expense. Cool. Was that, that probably tied into something that you guys were focusing on that week, right? At your church? Well, I, you know what? No. Uh, by your grace, that's always been a motto of mine because everything we do is by God's grace. Right. And so, uh, and if you notice, we start that course with by your grace, grant me faith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was kind of, I remember when we first, I, I know that the old, the concept of grant me grace because God does grant us grace to see your uh, grace to grow, to know you, your perfect love comes from up above. Grant me faith to know you with the heart of hope, a heart of praise, a heart to love you, Lord. So all faith is a gift of God. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, what a nice comment from Anna. Man, said, thank you. Oh, wow. Do I remember who wrote which? Not at all. Do you, Robbie? I don't Maybe either. you do. No, not a clue. Because the way we would typically write, and I assume this, I don't remember the specifics of this, is that we would uh, be shooting text messages back and forth and, and yeah. uh, with ideas, and then we would float things, and, you know, and, uh, and a lot of times, you know, one line would inspire another line from like if you give me a line and that might inspire a line too and then we would come with things and then refine it yeah yeah i, I could not think of a specific uh lyric definitely yeah it was very collaborative yeah i'm asking you and then it, you you drove the boat musically on this one if i remember correctly but well i don't know i could hear you singing it in the michael in your michael mcdonald uh, voice Ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the, the triceratops and your classical interlude. <laughs> I know. 
Yeah, we always have to go turn left somewhere in the corner here, you know, on the road. To, right. Uh, I haven't upgrade. watched it in so long, and, and that took me totally by surprise. I forgot that we had that in there. And indeed, this song is a prayer. It's asking yeah. God. I mean, it's a petition to, uh, asking God to do something for us, and that is to grant us faith. And I think it's so cool because, you know, a lot of times you hear the in church, you hear like, you know, name it and claim it. And uh -huh. sometimes it's used in kind of a prosperity gospel way that exactly. can be a bit questionable. You know, if it's like if you want a new Rolls Royce, man, God says you just <laughs> tell him and you're going to get one. It's like, no, yeah. not really. I, I think it's more in this context, context that if we ask for things that are in keeping with goodness and with him, you know, we're saying you paid the price to set me free. So yeah, you've already told me this is something I have. I'm just saying, yeah, I want that. I'll take it. <laughs> Amen. Amen, sister. And of course, God, I, I believe that God answers all prayers. Sometimes he says no. You know. Yeah. I can't think of how many things in life, you know, I haven't been alive that long, but how many things, oh, I wanted so badly to work out. And then it didn't work out and I was so sad. But then later in hindsight, I went, oh my God, thank you so much for answering no, you know, instead of Amen. Yes. No question about it. Joe Cocker moment. I'm always trying to have a Joe Cocker moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, here's another, uh, I've got some of the screenshots Thanks, from the, oh, there's one of the oh, screenshots. Oh, that's a cool screenshot. Mm -hmm. With the Bible right there. Yeah, yep. Oh, and Stereo Robbies. I like that there are two different outfits on the two different Robbies. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to, if you're playing a Hammond, you have to play with a different uh, vibe. I don't know. Right, right. And then we got kind of rock and roll Robbie over on the SK. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there, there's another screenshot. Any thoughts oh, about making cool. the video? What inspired the video? You know, whenever I make it, I just kind of sit down and go, okay, what's going to happen? And then just go from there. So it's a process of discovery for me too. So I just imagine it was super late one night, sat down, listened to the song and kind of said, okay, what, what'll work? Um, yeah, I definitely remember wearing the green screen cape to get ah. those uh, disembodied heads. <laughs> yeah, that's your uh, three Sarah, three headed Sarah. Yeah, Triceratops. Triceratops, perfect. But yeah, it, it turned out really well, yeah. the whole thing. And so it's been sitting there on the shelf all these, uh, well, for a couple of years now. And so finally, Gosh, it's time yeah. to get that stuff. I mean, it's better served instead of sitting on a shelf. Why not getting yeah, it out to the world? I mean, it might speak to someone. You never know. So it's better to just put it out there and, and let people hear it when did we when did we do it was it 2021 well, or 22 do you remember here let me i've got a on the chart there was a date june oh, 2021 wow wow there and there's the tempo it's 100 beats per minute Soul, yeah so if anyone says, wants to play it you can just take a screenshot it's pretty manageable you know, if you're like me, you might have to look up how to play E minor seven flat five. But uh, <laughs> oh, and there's the middle section actually. Gosh, that was all written out. Interesting. Wow. Um. Well, one of the things though, I've got to do because you know, uh, I have a new website, and I think we yes. talked about that. Have you announced that yet? Do, does everyone know? Yeah, I think they know. We have announced it a couple of weeks ago, and um, you can go to my website and every there's a page for every song. But Ooh, I've been I'm gonna go right now. And if you What's the website? sign, uh, the website is robbiesrecords.com. Very complicated. All right. There it is. And if you uh, here, Senior B says, "Do you write these out, Robbie, or do you let the DAW print it?" No, I I uh, I use Finale. I don't let the dog do it because uh, 
I've just some people don't know that Robbie is actually actually, actually? actively actually, actually <laughs> whatever. He's darn good as a copyist. I remember you telling me you used to do a lot of copying and arranging. Yeah, I did actually back back yeah, in the yeah, days when so we good. used to write uh, by hand before finale and all of that. Yes. And one of the reasons I bought a computer at the very beginning was when uh, I was so excited. You mean I can actually put that in? And then if we change keys, I can just hit a button and all that instead of recopying it all. But there you have it. This is a really nice site. Cool. And if you sign up for the email list, then you can. Uh, let's see here. If I, well, that's, I had a. Where did I? Here, I got a picture right here. Was it? Oh, cool. Yeah, making the list. And if you sign up for the email list, let me see if I've got it here. I don't think I have a, it handy. Um, but if you sign up for the email list, then you can. Um, bear with me a second. You if you sign up for the email the list, you can you get a free download of these songs. Oh. And I think some of the other things I'm going to put up there. Uh, why, if somebody might want the score, you know, I could send oh, them out cool. the score or something, you know, and stuff like that. And that's maybe really eventually cool. something to do actually, because we've got the tracks. All I have to do is do a track without the voice. If it somebody wanted nice. a karaoke track, if they want to do karaoke, Sarah, karaoke, Sarah, Sarioki. We've got, I got a pun for everything. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Did you hear, not to get onto a sad note, that the inventor of karaoke passed away today? He was 100. It, he was 100 and he invented karaoke. So it, he was later in life he invented that, I guess, because it's been around for 50 years or so, huh? if not, maybe it's more. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I just saw on, on Instagram. And, you know, there's never anything incorrect on social media. Hey, if it's on, uh, so if it's it on the internet, it's real. No it must be about true, it. yeah. Hey, one of the things that you, I want to congratulate you, not only on the super cool gigs that you've been doing lately, but also you just uh, got released with the band Blues Traveler. <gasps> Blues yes. Traveler featuring, featuring Sarah Nimitz, a new song, a Beatles song. Yeah, we um, they put out an album where they did their blues traveler take on classic R&B songs. So as far as I know, it went, they just picked some of their favorites. Um, and a buddy of mine was producing on that and playing on it. And apparently when they were in the room, my name came up. And so he called me and said, hey, you know, do you want to do a song with blues traveler? And I freaked out because I've been a fan of theirs since i mean basically my whole life all those huge hits in the 90s growing up with all of that and uh recorded it here in my studio and then sent the stuff over it was mixed we never actually met but we were you know digitally in the same room and yeah. uh, they just released that as a single today or yesterday a couple days ago and it sounds great and you're and Thanks. i listened to the mix and i love i mean your voice is big time prominent out there and you're featured and it was super cool congratulations thank you yeah they did a really great job that's a guy matt rawlings who produced it and uh yeah it's crazy what you can do with a good microphone and a computer i love it's become possible for well it takes almost... a super talented voice too that's the, that's another uh, aspect well Thank you. No, I'm, I was really, really excited to see that. They didn't tell me they were going to release it as a single. So somebody just sent me the link. Oh, look, there's a video. Oh, wow, that's exciting. That That is fantastic. Congratulations. Oh, what Beatles song? It was uh, We Can Work It Out, and it was modeled on Stevie Wonder's version of it. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. While you're talking about mention Fridays, uh, mention the Fridays. Why don't you talk about the Fridays? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, there's another project that I have right now with a friend of mine, Jason Goldman. Uh, and it's kind of a, it's hard to try to describe. I'm not great at that. I'd have to put something into chat GPT, but it's, it's a combination of rock and soul. It's kind of a, 
new retro sort of thing, and we have a lot of horns. Um, he's a great horn arranger, so we do a lot of horns. Cool. And uh, we've released three singles so far. So the newest single just came out a couple of days ago as well. So yeah, we, you're uh, a busy young again. lady. Just just trying to keep as many plates in the air as I can until they until they fall. <laughs> is it <laughs> Sarah or you. is it Chat GPT? <laughs> oh, no, I can guarantee you the only time I've used Chat GPT was when I had to uh, write like write descriptions for websites for venues. That's that's where I delegate it. But all of the writing is definitely us. <laughs> Amen, sister. Yeah, and yeah. I and I concur. Uh, Vince Martell is on on the show hey! here. Great listening to the discussion, and there is love, positive vibes. Thank you. We miss you. Can't wait to all get to go out again soon. Hopefully, so if you're in this Illinois area, yes, at the end of October, mm-hmm. right now it's looking like I mean none of none of it's locked in yet, but uh, right. Friday, November one. It looks like we're going to be uh, reuniting with the Get Your Kicks band uh, at the Wildly in Lit- in Edwardsville, Illinois. That is going to be so fantastic. So if you're watching this and you happen to own a venue in the Midwest, relatively near there, uh, think about, you know, uh, booking us. And thanks, Robert. That's amazing. And if you happen to be in the area close to Edwardsville, Illinois, drivable from there, send them an email or a note saying, we would love to have Sarah and Robbie and Vinny and Travis come back. Yes, absolutely. That helps because it did sell well, but it still still helps to have them feel like it's not just us that wants to come because we definitely do. Uh, but what it's would be cool nice if it's a- to do two nights in a row. Oh my there. gosh, I would love that. Now, Last time we talked, talked about a, the Christmas show. Uh, yeah, well, that's yeah, well, that's definitely another. That's, our, that's another, yeah, another kettle of fish. When I talked to some agents too about that last weekend and everybody's telling me that's one of the worst weeks to book anything because Halloween okay. and people don't go out and stuff like that. Kathy Marie okay, says well, Rialto perfect. Theater Joliet, Illinois, Cleveland. Hello, Cleveland. Yeah, there's another place. One more thing I want to touch on is, um, well, let me add you to the picture here. Ah. We got a great review this week uh, because, and it came on Tuesday, I think. And what we released last week, of course, is There is Joy. And uh, look what, uh, this was on Christian Dance EU, and the guy's name escapes me now because it's complicated. I wish I had it right there. I'll but... look it up while you're talking about it. Cool. So, Robbie Robinson and Sarah Nimitz welcome you to take a moment and find peace in God's arm with their song, There Is Joy. The lyrics reflect a heart-to-heart talk about God's boundless mercy and love for us. With Robinson's skill in uplifting orchestrations and Nimitz's much-venerated voice— this duo reminds us of the happiness and peace that come with knowing Jesus. It feels as if each note holds just a bit of that celestial peace, finding its way straight into our lives and pulling from it the kind of power that can only come from the strength found in his forgiveness. So I'm going to let you take it over from there, starting down with the lyric speak in the third paragraph. The lyrics speak to the wanderer, the weary, and the brokenhearted, offering a place of hope and a promise of joy beyond compare. And when life throws us curveballs, and we know that it will happen, the song echoes the certainty that in Jesus there is peace that surpasses all understanding, which if you're Sarah, doesn't take much to surpass your understanding. So thank goodness for that. Oh, that was, I inserted that. So if you're (laughs) thirsty for a drop of reassurance or hungry for a slice of serenity, give theirs joy a listen. The song is a beacon of comfort for anyone that is going through the storms of life. Allow the song to take you to a place of joy, unspeakable joy. Amen, amen. And I love his And that title. is Nico Zvonneveld. Thank you. And that's out of the Netherlands, actually. Wow, okay. And he's been very supportive. Almost everything that we've released, he's done a big article on. And so I encourage oh, everybody good. out there. And by the way, he's got, and he had us on the top Christian songs on his playlist and stuff. So I encourage people to go out there to uh, christiandance.eu. Mm-hmm. 
and they've got Facebook pages and and Spotify playlists and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it seems like quite the active place. And it's cool that they put related scripture at the bottom. Yeah, he goes in very much in depth. That's well, cool. I am going to turn left here again and let you go back to what you were doing. Thank you so much. All right. As you well, know, thank you. I'm going to New York City this week. Ooh, start spreading the news. Start spreading the news. And I and it's always so special to go back there. We're playing Radio City, not to name drop at all. Uh, I'd be name dropping if I were playing Friday That's night. Huge. And uh, I want to give the people a taste of what it's going to be like uh, to hear a Frankie Valley concert. You got to come out wherever you might be and hear Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons um, because you never know how much longer this whole act is going to go. We're going to be going, but. Uh, I'm going to give you a little taste of what it's like. Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons Live. Thank you, my friend, for coming on Jam and Java. Thank we are you. so honored to have you. So great to be here. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching. And, uh, yeah, if you can, go see uh, go see Robbie. I mean, you'll get to see Frankie, too. That's cool. <laughs> but go see Robbie at Radio City. Bring your, bring your signs that say, we want Robbie. There you go. Thanks, kiddo. Sarah Nimitz, everybody. Yeah.
that was, of course, from a memorable night, uh, 2022, in in uh, Royal Albert Hall with the BBC Orchestra on that one. That was pretty cool. Uh, so as we, as I mentioned, why is this thing not staying where? We're going to be Radio City Music Hall in New York City this coming Friday night, March 22nd. Looks like it's an 8 o'clock show, doors at 7. And that is going to be so cool because it's always, we've played there a number of times through the years. uh, And it's really one of the great venues in the world. Just like Royal Albert Hall is one of the great venues in the world that you saw in those clips. But this is also really, really, will we have extra horns? No, we're going to have um, three horn, three horns. The three horn players that we use, Rick Keller travels with us. And then we pick up different horn players in uh, the different marketplaces. And uh, uh, the trumpet player that we have is Trevor Neumann, who is one of the top New York guys. And then on trombone, actually, this this weekend, we're going to have a guy from Chicago, uh, Dylan Ream, who's played with us a bunch. And then Rick Keller on saxes. Let's see here. Uh, here, I've got some old pictures of Radio City. That's uh, us a few years ago at Radio City. Um, Frankie and I on stage. There's the band and some of the... That's actually Bone. That's Trevor in the middle. That's Bones Malone, second from the your right, or from our right as we look. That's at Radio City. There's another Radio City picture. There's Frankie and I discussing something musical. I There's a classic venue, and if you don't know where Radio City is, it's right down in the heart of Times Square, right among, and there's so much energy in New York, which is just around the corner, actually, from where Sarah played at the Iridium. That's us. Well, you can, you can see Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons on the marquee there. So that's from, a, I think we played there in 2022. I can't remember. There I am. Uh, that's the organ at Radio City. They have a great theater organ. Many of the really super cool, um, so a lot of the big old theaters, most of them have a uh, theater organ and Bob Heil who passed away and of course who we paid tribute to a couple weeks ago was a great theater organist but one of the things I love to do is get a chance to get out there and play the theater organs and all these old things. I've got to play at a Royal Albert Hall a bunch of these great venues here we go there's the uh, theater organ there at Radio City There's Radio City. I mean, look, it's obviously a big place. And, of course, that was the home of the Rockettes. Everybody knows the famous Rockettes. If you haven't seen the Christmas show, uh, Radio City Rockettes, uh, that's one of the memorable things to see if you ever get a chance. You know, one of the things that's really a sad, sad situation is... I'm going to wait for this music to calm down here, and then I'll tell you my thinking here. Oh, there's my buddy Ray Negron at Radio City uh, a couple years ago. And Ray Negron and I, of course, we're involved in a show called Reach Out, which we've kind of, we haven't been busy busy with it lately too much. Uh, But we're going to be regrouping that of course baseball season has started and um or is getting ready to start the first game of the season this year is the dodgers and the padres in south korea and it happens i think wednesday night i think it's going to be on at 3 a.m in, in la uh, but i digress so this week i had scheduled 
a meeting with a guy who had been a guest on Reach Out, and his name is Byron Janus. And Thursday, I was so looking forward to this. Thursday, I was going to go to Byron Janice's home uh, on Park Avenue and his wife, Maria Cooper, who is Gary Cooper's daughter. But Byron Janice is one of the world's premier concert pianists. I mean, renowned, legendary. And he was 95 years old, and we were scheduled to get together this Thursday, and I was so much looking forward to it. And um, they were going to have their publicists there and this whole thing. And then I got a note that um, I got a note Sunday morning. I got a call that Byron passed away. And I and it's and my heart and my prayers go out to Byron family and his wife especially Maria and uh, this was Byron legendary American pianist I mean one of the greatest pianists of our time New York Times uh, and here is the obit Byron Janus pianist of romantic passion dies at 95 he had a brilliant career before arthritis in his hands forced him from the stage but he overcame this condition and returned to performing the pianist Byron Janice in 2010 he is famed for his performances of romantic repertoire, repertory, especially uh, Chopin. I mean, he was a brilliant Chopin. And I was, oh, again, I'm sad for me, but I'm so sad for the family. Maria, who is just a total class act, his wife, I know she is so sad. And so, again, my hearts, my sympathy, and my prayers go out to the family and the wife of Maestro Byron Janus. Oh, what a life he has had. 95 years young. And so that was one of, and so Thursday I was going to be going there to uh, meet with him. And we, I was, uh, again, it was going to be a really a memorable, memorable experience for me, but not to be, as it turns out. One of the things of going to New York city is always so special. I mean, and there's an energy in New York that is just unparalleled, uh, which what happens when you have, uh, that many millions of people all congregated together in such a small little uh, area again, and that place is definitely one of the ma- amazing places. There's another shot of us at, at uh, Radio City from behind. How cool is that as a shot? And here are the tour dates that we're doing this weekend. We've been rehearsing, uh, we had rehearsal all day today because it's been a few weeks since we have um, performed and uh, so we're going to be going out so I got up 6 o'clock this morning started, I had to write some arrangement stuff ran off to rehearsal came back this afternoon and uh, took a quick power nap and then got Jam and Java ready to rock and roll except I forgot to pull up the microphone <laughs> but this is weekend okay Friday Radio City Music Hall Saturday, March 23rd at the Wang Theater in Boston, Massachusetts. A great venue in Boston. And then on Sunday, we're at the Lyric Opera House in Baltimore, Maryland. So if you want to really see a great show, if I do say so myself, come and see Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. And, um, and uh, come and rock out with us. Then... Uh, our next set is a couple weeks away, and you can see on the schedule here, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we, were, we will be at the Westgate Casino in Las Vegas. Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. And that is definitely one of the... Any changes set list? We were playing around with things. Still, we d- determined, yeah, if you may know, we kind of play with things and right up to the last minute, actually. Um, say hi to Meredith Sunday. Oh, in Baltimore. Yes, that's right. Meredith, 
Mer- Meredith, uh, Bob Goldstein's daughter. Um, now, this past week, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Michael McDonald came over to the studio. We did a nice little hang, and there <laughs> Uh, you know, Michael and I, I knew Michael when he was still a teenager playing in the St. Louis area, just another local musician, local band guy. And, um, uh, we had a nice talk. He came over and we shared, uh, tidbits about the Hammond organ. And, uh, and we talked a lot of history, um, of, uh, back in those days in Litchfield and St. Louis and, I mean, Michael's played at Litchfield at the high school there um, back in those days. And I just remember him as this amazing um, musician, singer, keyboard player. I remember him playing Ray Charles tunes on the Wurlitzer piano. And every we all knew that something special was going to happen with Michael McDonald because he was his talent was that exceptional. And uh, he is one of the most humble, genuine amazing artist that you'll ever know and one of these nights coming up in the near near future uh he is going to be our special guest here on jam and java and we're going to do a whole uh evening kind of dedicated to michael and that's going to be so much fun so be watching for that i think um uh he's got a new book coming out so we'll probably wait till right before that re that book gets released. I think it's coming out in the beginning of May. So sometime around there, we'll uh, do a Michael McDonald. Um, yeah, he did an interview with Rick Beato. Beato, uh, And, uh, yeah, and that did come off really well. He is definitely a super, super duper talented guy. Here's one of the things, too, I, I kind of dig. If you – there, that was a picture of that I took at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, – a while back, and that's Michael McDonald's Oberheim Modular Synthesizer uh, that he played on tour with the Doobie Brothers, and we talked about that because if you look behind me right here, I have that same that same uh, modular Oberheim Modular synthesizer right there those were classic uh in the that 70s sound they were the actually it was the very first polyphonic synthesizer uh ever invented the mini moog which is a top that was really the first monophonic synthesizer but that you could only play one note at a time and then oberheim basically took his con- model eight separate mini moogs all in one big box and uh, so you could have eight different voices. And I remember it was 10000 bucks for that thing in, like, 1976 or 77 whenever I got it. So those were super expensive, and they were – and most musicians couldn't afford it. And so somehow I was able to, to get that thing. And so that was uh, definitely a great, great-sounding synthesizer. And I actually used it on tour with Frankie, too, when I started up with him in 78. But I, I had that before then. There's Carla and Michael in the studio here. He really is amazingly humble and nice and just just a down-to-earth Midwestern guy, you know. There we are hanging out. Senior B says, was it different, difficult to keep in tune? Yes, it was because that that thing, now there's... That's half of it, what you see right there. And what you see behind me is half of it because there's another box that connects to it. And so there are eight voices. There are two oscillators per voice. One of these days I'll fire it up and we'll we'll get into it. It's a great thing. And these voices here, let's see, like right here. So let me answer your question. There are 16 voices, 16 oscillators. So you have to tune 16 oscillators. And uh yes, and they they don't stay in tune, so every 
every so often you have to retune them and you have to tune 16 oscillators and kind of get them all tuned very microscopically. It's, it, it, it is a chore to keep that stuff in tune. No question about it. Well, let's play some music, as a matter of fact. Uh, that's kind of what's going on there. Let's see here. we got back this. Uh, what do we have? Well, you know what? This Sunday is Palm Sunday, which means we start the road to Easter which is really amazing. So starting Sunday is Palm Sunday where Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the, on a colt and all the, everybody cheered him and, and, uh, waved palm branches. And then that starts Easter week, week, Holy week. So Thursday night at our church, um, Trinity Lutheran church in Simi Valley, we're going to have uh, a Maundy Thursday service, which is really, really great. Uh, then Friday night, um, Friday night we have a, a Good Friday service. Saturday we have a big rehearsal because we've got brass. We've got uh, a bunch of great musicians coming in. <laughs> and then uh, Sunday we have four services. We do a 6 a.m. service with Andrea Hammond and I are doing the music for that. 6 a.m. garden service, sunrise service, which is really cool out in the garden. 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. So if you're anywhere in the air, come by and uh, worship the Lord with us on Easter Sunday. That's a week from this Sunday, of course. And then Wednesday in two days, uh, we have our last Lenten service at Trinity Lutheran with Andrea and I, and I think maybe it's time to play a Lenten song. One of the big, most powerful Lenten songs is a song called When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And um, I think I have it here. Let me see here. I think I have it here. When I survey, and so on this, I actually played a pipe organ, and Andrea, of course, and played her brilliant violin as she does so amazingly. And um, so this song really kind of talks about that dark night in Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane, which on Thursday night Jesus went to pray. And uh, that's, of course, then he went uh, and then he, uh, the soldiers came out to arrest him as he was out in the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, this is an old hymn. It's a very powerful old hymn. And uh, we did our version of it, I think, and it's very Lenten. Of course, we are still immersed in the season of Lent, which is the 40 days before Easter when we uh, break out and celebrate that Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But this is Andrea Hammond and I doing our rendition of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Hold on. I, I gave a build up for uh go to Dark Gethsemane and I then I played the wrong song. So let me let me do that a little better here. Do I have Go to Dark Gethsemane? Yes, I do have it here. All right, here is Go to Dark Gethsemane. <laughs>
hastened to the tomb where they laid his breathless clay. All this solitude and gloom, who has taken him away? Christ is risen, he Amen, amen, amen. Um, that song, interestingly enough, Robert, Bo- very nice. Oh, Robert Bothwell, it was so neat to see you, Robert. Uh, Robert, Robert came in, uh, drove in from Las Vegas to come to our Wednesday night service. Great and welcoming. Congratulations, Andrea and Robbie, our blessing for their church. Amen. Well, it's a blessing to be at that church. Um, and uh, by the way, and at our Sunday morning, all of our services are, are well, not all of our services, our Sunday morning services and the Wednesday night services, and even the Easter, I think they're going to stream many, many, many of those uh, services. One of the things I thought I would tell, well, here, let me show this too. This is one of the amazing things. If I go to here to this, let's see, do I have it here or do I have it? No, it's over here. Bear with me here, hitting the right buttons and all that kind of stuff. Let's see here. My things is, come on, get out of the way. We know that there's 5 million views. And that was, again, there is joy. Who will be at Radio City this week? Anyone want to meet? Oh, <laughs> any of you guys. There you go. Uh, here is the YouTube views of on the Robbie's Record uh uh, website, um, here, let me do this. And What Me Worry, which is that jazz piece that I did with uh, Jim Alfredson and Brian Charette, is 847,000 views. So we're coming up on a million views for that one song, which is cool. But the second song on the list, look at that, is Go to Dark Gethsemane, has been seen by 704,000 people. 705, essentially, almost 705,000. And that's, uh, it was released March 6th, so it's been out for a year, that song that you just heard. And the 705,000 in that year. The second, the third one, which is seeming to be the fastest rising, is All That Matters that I did with my grandkids, 580,000. Fourth on the list is Route 66, 540,000. I Write the Songs, 510,000. Will to Win, 326,000 from this moment with uh, Tony Gala, 274. Knock Three Times, 278K. Tell It to the Rain, 242K. So it, it is interesting to see that Go to Dark Gethsemane, which you wouldn't think of as a song that would get a lot of play and all that kind of thing, um, is doing so well out there. It's seen by 700, 000, over 700,000 people. So that's amazing. And thank you. You know what? I, I never want to forget to thank each one of you for all of your amazing support. It's so cool to see each one of you come out uh, on these Monday nights and hang out with me. And uh, you never know where we're going to go musically. It's always an adventure. Um, Jam and Java got its start about 10 years ago at church, at Trinity Lutheran Church, and it was a jam session with my brother Rex, who plays bass, of course, uh, Craig Pilo, and then some different drummers. Uh, and it wasn't always Rex because we had different bass players might come in, and, but it was we had a core trio and I had a lot of different musicians would come in. It was basically a Monday night jam session, and we had, and it was a coffee, coffee house kind of a vibe, and it was so much fun. And when I was setting up this afternoon, I came across this old video, and I thought, this is really cool. I might just play that tonight. And so 
This is actually from 2014, so 10 years ago. Crazy, crazy. And uh, this was uh, Craig Pilo on the drums, and this is us just jamming on a song. I think you're going to know this song. It's one of Frankie Valli's biggest hits, if not Frankie Valli's biggest hit ever. And um, this is Can't Take My Eyes Off You with Warren Ham uh, and me and Rick, uh, Rick Fiera Bracci on bass and Craig Pilo on drums. And uh, check this out. This So this is how this whole – and then – COVID, what happened is we were doing this Monday night jam session. When COVID hit, we couldn't do the jam session, so that kind of evolved, thanks to Joe Barsulia, by the way, into this um, podcast, video podcast, if you will. And uh, we haven't kind of looked back, but this is us back in 2014, uh, just jamming. Check it out. It's kind of fun. One, two, three, one, three.
You're just too good to be true. was so we would have so much fun playing on those monday nights obviously we were just uh we were jamming you know just kind of faking it there and it was always uh, a lot of fun and a lot of different great musicians would come by and um oh what a night that's for sure now uh warren ham who you know there uh if you've watched my show at all has been my buddy forever and ever he used to be with us with frankie valley and the Four Seasons back in the 90s. And, uh, I mean, he's played with basically, you could almost say, everybody. And right now he's in two bands. And has, he tours with a band called Toto. He's out on tour. The past two years he's been touring like a maniac. And he also plays in Ringo's All-Stars. And so he's definitely one of the most talented guys, by the way. But he's going to be at Trinity Lutheran Church on Easter Sunday morning with us. So uh, how cool is that? And Nick Lane is going to be there, and we're going to have our red sousaphone there. And, um, uh, oh, what a Easter Sunday that's going to be. That's a week from this Sunday. Um, so uh, thanks, Vinny. Uh, by the way, Vinny, I, I saw a text from you today, and I didn't get back to you. Uh, I will send that out to you. I, had, no, I know I have to send you a uh, another version of that mix we're working on us. We're working on, if I may say so here, uh, uh, born to be wild with Vinny, Travis, Sarah, and I, and, uh, I've got a mix of that. We're working on that. And, uh, that's going to be a super cool thing. That's going to get, yes, we have a red sousaphone at church on Easter Sunday played by Robbie. He Oki. And the band, Brian, he's in Brian Setzer Orchestra. Um, and so that's that. You know what? I, uh, all musicians love to play, and all musicians love to jam. And uh, one of the things, so last week I, sh I showed some pictures of the birthday party that we went to at the Rock and Roll Pizza where uh, for Tristan Garcia son of my dear, dear friend, Richie Gajate Garcia. And uh, uh, Richie and I got up on stage and played with Alex Nestor and her amazing band. And I've got a kind of a clip of that. This is kind of a fun. This is also in that kind of a jam place. Check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
lot of fun. That was here in Simi Valley at the Rock and Roll Pizza, which is a part of a bowling alley kind of a, a venue. And that's uh, that was fun. And so the people in the, and of course, uh, the great Alex Nestor, who actually got her start right over here in my vocal booth when she was nine years old and spent a lot of hours in there doing a lot. Because I used to do a lot of uh, kids' records, a lot of VBS records and stuff. And um, so that, and then Richie Gahate Garcia is one of my best friends in the world. And he's the guy who got me the job with Frankie Valley in 1978. He and I've been playing together since 1971. And his two boys, Tristan Garcia, who was playing bass, and he just turned 40. And that was the birthday celebration for that. And the guy who was playing the bongos is Roland, Gar Roland Gahate Garcia, who's become one of the premier percussionists in the world along with his dad, and it's amazing. Uh, Roland plays on Dancing with the Stars. He also was on American Idol for years and years, and he's played with people like uh, uh, like Stevie Wonder and a bunch of the great uh, contemporary artists. Uh, he's all over the place. Uh, he was on the Grammys this year, and uh, so there you have it. So uh, we've got that new song out there, which is super cool. Uh, so do us a favor and uh, go and um, check out Grant Me Faith on the uh, on however you listen to your music. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. It's on Deezer. It's on iTunes. It's on YouTube Music. It's on um uh it's on. Uh, well, everything, basically every every streaming platform. And uh, as uh, one month in 78, did I go on stage with Frankie? Uh, August of 1978. And my first gig was at the Garden State Arts Center. I'll never forget it. And I did it with no rehearsal. Uh, and I had been working with Buddy Greco prior to that. And... Um, finished up some dates with Buddy and then went uh, to New York, and uh, here I am still still rocking and rolling with Frankie Valley. Amazing. 46 years. I've been a long. I'm very blessed to have had such a great gig for so, so long. Um, and so we'll be there this weekend in uh, Radio City, of course. <laughs> okay. Enough of that song. Um, what else? So it's about time to wrap things up. Uh, we'll be here next Monday and, uh, I'm sure I'll have a lot of cool things to say about this weekend in, uh, on the East coast. We're doing, as I mentioned, radio city this Friday, Boston, Saturday, Sunday in Baltimore, coming home Monday, right to jam and Java. And of course the beginning of Holy week. And so we have a lot of uh, great church music this coming week, and we'll uh, have the road to Easter next Monday. I've got some great guests uh, in the wings that are going to be coming on in the near future. I I would just t talk today to oh no uh, let me match. Do you remember the song, I Will Follow Him? Little Peggy March, and she's going to be a guest uh, sometime soon, which is really cool. George says, then I was the first, you were my first Valley concert, August 78, at Magic Mountain in California. Wow. No, I didn't do that. I don't think I did that gig. Maybe I did. I don't know if that was, oh, is tonight Tony Orlando's last performance? I'm glad you brought Tony Orlando's name up. Tony Orlando is, I mean, this guy is a legend, no question about it. Let me talk about a minute about Tony Orlando because Tony Orlando is a dear, dear friend, but I, I'm i so amazed at him in the fact that this guy is such a kind, generous soul. If you didn't know that he was Tony Orlando, you would not know that this guy was a mega superstar with his own TV show. And his song, Tie Yellow Ribbon, is one of the, 
iconic songs of all history. One of those rare songs that has trans uh, transform not transformed. It's it jumped out of just being a song, and it's touched hearts and lives around the world for its message. That whole idea of the yellow ribbon. But talking about Tony Orlando's final performance is going to be this Friday, Mohegan Sun. Uh, I would love to be there. That's the same night we're playing in Ro- in Radio City, so I obviously can't be there. But if you're anywhere near in Connecticut or close to Connecticut and you want to go see a legendary night, Tony Orlando, his last performance, this coming Friday, March 22nd, Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Now, Tony has made the point over and over and over and over that Tony Orlando is not retiring from music. He's retiring from being a performance, from performing. And so, yeah, Dominic says he will still have his New York radio show. He still wants to do projects. He and I have talked about doing projects a bunch, so I would really look forward to collaborating with Tony in any way, shape, or form and making some music, and we've got a lot of cool ideas actually floating around. But, Tony, my prayers go out that you have just an absolutely special, memorable time uh, on your last performance. Um, But I will tell you, people, between you and me, I uh, think that he's going to come back. He can't just... He's the, he's been a performer for over sixty years. He had a hit re- his first hit record when he was sixteen years old, uh, and he is uh, I mean he's just an amazing performer. Uh, so I would uh, who knows um, he was he I I'll show you what he did to me when I went to hear him uh, a, a few weeks ago in Vegas his last Vegas concert he was really gracious to me and. Uh, uh, I've, I feel fortunate to have captured it on uh, video. Check this. It was what Tony Orlando was saying about me. I couldn't. I don't and I went out and I watched him the other night do two hours of number one records in a row. I'm literally. And I said to him after the show, Frankie, why don't you do some of your hits? He said, with a straight face, I swear, he said, I left two out. <laughs> and in the audience tonight, <clears throat> remember what I said about Sammy? You can't make it without your bench. Well, an example of that is Frankie Valley's musical director. He's been with Frankie for 46 unbelievable years. And when you go see Frankie Valley, you notice the energy and the love. This musical director yeah. exposes on that stage. You, just, you can see it. And the people in the audience, he doesn't know this. They turn to each other and go, Watch, what, what, watch this musical director. Watch him. He's great. He's just like, Look at this. Watch like this. I love you, baby. And it is quite all right. I love you, baby. The whole audience is singing that. And this musical director smiling with pride. And I'm going to smile with pride tonight because he's honored me by coming to see my show. Would you welcome Robin Robertson, the great musical director. Where are you? There he is, right there. See him right there? That's the man right there. You're unbelievable. I thought you were a week ago. You truly, 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 truly. It was a very... Tony is one of the most gracious, kindest, giving stars that I've ever known in this business. What an amazing guy. And so, again, my prayers go out for Tony for this weekend for him. Uh, We're going to have to have a a Tony Orlando night sometime in the near, near future so we can really have Tony reflect and talk about this last gig. Uh, So one of these nights uh, I'm going to talk to Tony and we'll figure out when we can make that happen. Um, so all that being said, it's coming up to the top of the hour 
And uh, so I think it's time for us to wrap things up here. I always like to close with a song. So I'm going to come back as soon as this song is over. But this is a song that um, you're going to hear Warren Ham, who you heard earlier. You're going to hear Sarah Nimitz, who you heard earlier. You're going to hear Alex Nestor, who you heard earlier. And this is a song uh, that Doc Kupka and I did. Of course, this is the theme song for Jam for Jesus. And um, uh, this is going to be something, too, because Doc Kupka and I have been Doc Kupka and I have been working on a record, uh, an album for a couple of years now. And he, Doc Kupka from the band Tower of Power, if you don't know, by the way. Uh, this is Jam for Jesus. Check it out. But I'll be back. Don't go away. <laughs> swing and didn't follow through. Jam for Jesus, jam for Jesus, let the Spirit in. Jam for Jesus, back at a jubilee. Jam for Jesus, let's see what we can see. What will the Master say? Somebody say amen, amen, and I will see you all next Monday. We'll be actually. I'm flying home Monday 
So we play Sunday night in Baltimore. So I'll be flying home Monday morning and uh, get back sometime in the afternoon, I guess, and probably coming right here to Jam and Java. So uh, we'll see about all. We'll be able to reflect on all the adventures this past week. God's big blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for spending some time with me on Jam and Java. I'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye. Lord, give me faith. Lord, give me strength. Grant me the grace to love you. Oh, my own, I'm so alone. And you are by my way. Faith to find, faith to buy, faith to grow.
you gray and me, baby.